The history of civilization is inseparable from the history of taxation. From the earliest Mesopotamian city-states to the modern nation-state, taxes have been both a source of funding and a point of contention. Taxes, in essence, represent the price we pay for civilization. They are the lifeblood of public works, social services and national defense. Without taxation, there would be no roads, no schools, no armies to defend our borders. Yet the history of taxation is also a history of struggle. It is a narrative woven with tales of resistance, reform and the constant negotiation between the needs of the state and the rights of the individual. Join us as we delve into the fascinating history of taxation, a journey that will illuminate not only the financial underpinnings of civilization but also the very nature of power, governance and the delicate balance between individual and collective responsibility. The ancient land of Mesopotamia, nestled between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, is widely regarded as the cradle of civilization. Sumerian city-states flourishing in the fourth millennium BCE developed sophisticated systems of accounting and administration, including the imposition of taxes. Taxes in ancient Mesopotamia were primarily paid in kind, reflecting the agrarian nature of the society. Farmers contributed a portion of their harvest to the state. Labor, too, was a form of taxation in Mesopotamia. Citizens were required to contribute a certain number of days each year to public works projects, such as the construction of temples, irrigation canals and city walls. These early forms of taxation were essential for the development of Mesopotamian civilization. Across the sands of time, another great civilization arose along the banks of the Nile River, ancient Egypt. Ruled by pharaohs considered to be divine kings, Egypt developed a highly centralized and sophisticated system of taxation. Taxation in ancient Egypt was intricately linked to the pharaoh's role as the guarantor of Ma'at, the cosmic order that encompassed truth, justice and balance. Taxes were seen not merely as a means of raising revenue, but as a sacred duty owed to the pharaoh. Farmers surrendered a portion of their harvest to royal officials. Beyond agricultural produce, Egyptians paid taxes in the form of labor. This system of forced labor was essential for the completion of the monumental projects that have come to define ancient Egyptian civilization. From the seven hills of Rome emerged an empire that would leave an indelible mark on Western civilization. The Roman Republic and later the Roman Empire developed a sophisticated tax system that both fueled its expansion and ultimately contributed to its decline. Roman taxation evolved to encompass a wider range of sources, including land, commerce and even inheritance. At the heart of the Roman tax system lay the concept of public revenue, funds collected for the common good. These revenues financed the construction of roads and aqueducts, the maintenance of a powerful army, and the administration of a vast empire. To collect taxes across its sprawling domains, Rome relied on a system of tax farming. Private individuals, known as publicani, bid for the right to collect taxes in specific regions. This oppressive taxation, coupled with widespread corruption, fueled resentment among the populace, contributing to the decline of the Roman Empire. With the fall of the Roman Empire, Europe descended into a period of fragmentation and instability. Out of this chaos emerged feudalism, a decentralized system of governance based on personal oaths of loyalty and the exchange of land for military service. Taxation in the medieval world, shaped by the feudal order, reflected the hierarchical relationships that defined society. Peasants tied to the land owed their lord a portion of their harvest, labor services and various dues and fees. These payments, collectively known as feudal dues, provided for the lord's household, financed the construction and maintenance of castles and supported the lord's retinue of knights. Feudal dues were often burdensome, leaving peasants with little to spare after meeting their obligations. The feudal system of taxation, while suited to the decentralized nature of medieval society, ultimately proved to be a barrier to progress. In the annals of history, few documents hold the same symbolic power as the Magna Carta. 
Sealed in 1215 by King John of England under duress from his rebellious barons, the Magna Carta stands as a cornerstone of individual liberty. Its primary aim was to reassert the traditional rights and privileges of the English nobility. Among these rights was the principle that the king could not levy new taxes without the consent of the common council of the realm. The Magna Carta's principles, particularly the notion of consent in taxation, resonated far beyond the confines of the feudal system. From the American Revolution to the struggle for independence in India, the Magna Carta's spirit has fueled the fight for freedom and self-determination. Across the vast Atlantic Ocean, a new nation was born, forged in the crucible of revolution and the enduring principle of no taxation without representation. The American Revolution was ignited, in part, by a dispute over taxes between Great Britain and its American colonies. Following the costly Seven Years' War, the British Parliament sought to increase revenue from its American colonies. A series of acts, including the Stamp Act of 1765 and the Townshend Acts of 1767, imposed new taxes on a range of goods without the consent of colonial legislatures. No taxation without representation became the rallying cry of the American colonists. In 1775, the first shots of the American Revolution were fired at Lexington and Concord, setting in motion a chain of events that would culminate in the birth of a new nation. Across the pond, the United Kingdom was undergoing its own transformation in the realm of taxation. The Napoleonic Wars had left Britain with a colossal national debt. To finance the war effort, the British government introduced income tax in 1799 as a temporary measure. However, the tax proved to be surprisingly effective and was reintroduced permanently in 1842. The reintroduction of income tax marked a significant shift in British tax policy. Unlike previous taxes, income tax was based on the principle of taxing individuals based on their ability to pay. The evolution of taxation in the United Kingdom exemplifies the transformative power of progressive taxation in creating a more just and equitable society. As the world entered the 20th century, globalization accelerated, connecting nations and economies in unprecedented ways. Taxation, once largely a domestic affair, took on a global dimension as countries grappled with the challenges of taxing multinational corporations and addressing issues of tax avoidance and evasion. The rise of international trade and investment led to the emergence of double taxation. To address this issue, countries began negotiating bilateral tax treaties to avoid double taxation and prevent tax evasion. Developing countries sought ways to attract foreign investment while ensuring a fair share of revenue from multinational corporations. The 21st century has witnessed growing calls for international tax cooperation to address the challenges of taxing the digital economy and ensuring that multinational corporations pay their fair share of taxes. In the intricate world of taxation, governments employ a diverse array of tools to generate revenue. Two fundamental categories, direct taxes and indirect taxes, represent distinct approaches to collecting revenue. Direct taxes are levied directly on individuals or corporations, targeting their income, profits or wealth. Income tax, the cornerstone of many modern tax systems, exemplifies this approach. Indirect taxes, on the other hand, are levied on goods and services, collected at the point of sale or consumption. Sales tax adds a percentage to the price of goods purchased by consumers. The choice between direct and indirect taxes presents governments with a delicate balancing act. A well-designed tax system typically employs a mix of direct and indirect taxes, striking a balance between equity, efficiency and administrative feasibility. At the heart of any discussion about taxation lies a fundamental question, fairness. Who should bear the burden of taxation and how should that burden be distributed? Progressive taxation rests on the principle of ability to pay. Under a progressive tax system, the tax burden increases as income rises. Regressive taxation, in contrast, places a disproportionate burden on lower income earners. Sales tax, for instance, is considered regressive because it consumes a larger portion of the income of low income earners. The choice between progressive and regressive taxation reflects a society's values and priorities. Progressive taxation aims to create a more equitable distribution of wealth, 
while regressive taxation can be justified on the grounds of simplicity and ease of administration.